That's verse 14. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The word of the Lord for the people of God. You can take your seat. Today we continue the year theme. The year theme is entitled Kingdom Authority. Kingdom Authority. And we're on the series entitled Kingdom Design, The Life and Legacy of David. Today, I want to speak from the sermon topic, a situational setup. A situational setup. Hmm. Let's begin. Church, I can recall when there was the familiar phrase, set me up. Set me up. You remember that? You have to be above about 40. Set me up. It was like, hook me up. Set me up. Set me up. Now, when we use that phrase, we used it for our good or towards our betterment. You know, set me up with some nice food. Set me up with some good seats. Burles, they know about setting up the 10th frame with a strike or at least a spare in the ninth frame. One wanted the inside track to a situation. One wanted the heads up. All of this is a setup. Now setups, I like, I like to set up a lot of things. I like to set up a lot of things. One of the setups I organize on purpose is that when I go grocery shopping, I speak to all of the workers even if they don't speak to me. I'm going to take my time here. You've got to see the setup. Okay. <laughs> I think it is very important to respect those who have even the seemingly menial job of packing groceries. It's menial, but honorable. And my mom can vouch for this. You know, from time to time, I take a grocery shopping. I have conversations while shopping. So let me share this recent account. As a matter of fact, it was just this past Tuesday. Just this past Tuesday. I went in just to get a few things. Of course, you know a few things turns into. I'm not impressive myself. I have a list. I set myself up with a list. I fall every time. So anyway, I went in on Tuesday. <laughs> just to get a few things. So I did my normal. Began to walk down an aisle and I would not pass a person stacking shelves without speaking. While I was going, while I was going down the rice aisle, you know, that's how we call it, whatever you see fresh. While I was going down the rice aisle, there were three female workers stuck in the shelves. So I did my normal, did my normal, passed number one worker, good afternoon. They replied to me in kind, you know, good afternoon. Went past the next worker and greeted her, and she greeted me in kind. Then I came to the third female worker, all in the same aisle, all in the rice aisle, right? Now, at this time, I was in the setup flow. I speak to you, you speak to me. I say good afternoon, you say good afternoon to me. I'm in the setup, I'm in the setup. It's flowing nicely, it's flowing nicely in the rice aisle, right? So. 
I come to this worker, she's not going to be any different. She's going to do the same thing. She just heard two workers, right? So I said, good afternoon. How are you? And here's the response I got. I'm weak, pale, run down, overworked, underpaid. Otherwise, that I'm doing good. <laughs> but I bust out laughing. I was doubled over laughing, right? The other two women were laughing too. We were all in the aisle laughing. And, and, and I said to the lady, I said, because she went so fast. I said, could you repeat that again? Right? Then the other lady said, now you know that's pastor. She's going to put it in one of her sermons. <laughs> So I've actually got it recorded. I've got it recorded saying it. And yes, she is right. She was right. She is right. Because it's right here in this sermon today. Well, <laughs> well, the truth is that people can set you up for a fall or for a win. Now, what I love about God is that his setups will always take you up. God's setups will always take you up. Then he is a setup by God, may have you experience pain, loss, and even a fall. However, if you trust God's process, he'll bring you through better, wiser, stronger, and more grateful than ever. I trust God's setups, even when they have been and are very painful or hurtful. Because I am a faith child, I go trust God no matter what and no matter who. Joshua 1 and 9, he said this, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's a setup. 2 Samuel 7 and 28 says, Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy. And you have promised these good things to your servant. Set up. He's an NIV. Psalms 9 and 10. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. I'm rejoicing right there. Just, just couldn't the scriptures ought to get you happy. Huh? All these about trusting God. You know, I found out, and, and it's so interesting in the world that we live, people have trust issues. That's the bottom line. They didn't want to trust the mama and the daddy. They, nobody want to trust nobody. And the enemy has put it out there. You can't even trust the church. Well, the devil is a liar. You just got to find the right church and understand who to trust. And by the way, you're trusting more than a person. You're trusting the word of God. The word of God is first. Look here, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Some of you have this as your favorite scripture verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge or submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Trust him. I need to wake up somebody. Not, not that anybody's sleeping Facebook. That was just a phrase. I need to wake you up to understand that whatever you're going through, if you're having a trust issue, you've got to point yourself back to the cross, point yourself back into the word of God. In our text of today, you will see that indeed David will be set up. David has to be set up because God has a destiny for him that must come to pass. How about that? How about that? That whatever you're going to go through, it's on your way to purpose. Whatever you're going to go through, it's on your way to your destiny. Listen, I don't care what it is because I believe in God and I trust God and I love God. It's taking me somewhere. Whatever I'm going through, I'm going to where God has prepared for me that place. So let's look at this now as we deal with the following three points. Point number one, the missing anointing. Go on. The missing anointing, go on. Point number two, the mandated action, go. The mandated action, go. And then point number three, the melodic answer, give. The melodic answer, give. So let's deal with it. Point number one, the missing anointing, go on. Church, you want to thank God that when he created the world, it was balanced. <laughs> this world will take you out of balance, but you got to remember that God is a God of balance. I'm, you know, I'm so glad that the way this thing is tilted on the axis, that we just haven't fallen over anywhere. <laughs> because God has got the whole universe. So somehow, this little tilted axis of ours 
the way that the earth is tilted has no impact upon our stability. So God, are you trying to say that even when we're tilted, we're still stable? Because there's something outside of us that keeps us balanced in spite of ourselves? How about that? Well, you know, half the time I feel like I'm upside down. You all know I can't see half the time my contacts on. There it is, the Indian Ocean. So God, he, he created the world with balance. What did I say? He created the world with balance. Okay, okay, watch this now. There was day and night. Balance. Uh-huh. The day star he called the sun. Mm. And the night star he called the moon. Balance. There were flying things and swimming things, creeping things and walking and running things. Balance. There was a male. Uh, there was a male and a female. Balance. Okay, I'm skipping past that because it's not. Um, um, I just can't help it. Every time I read the word, it's about balance. Balance. God is a God of balance. Church, the surveillance of this balance system was let loose or revealed in Genesis. Now, I want to take you there. I want to take you to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Take a look at it here. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But, you know, little stipulation in there, little stipulation. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Wait a minute, it's the one tree with good and evil. Hmm. Thou shalt not eat of it. Don't even eat of the good. Because the minute that you eat of the good, the evil's going to be. All right, all right. Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Go up and tell mankind from the beginning not to do things because they're going to die. We're still trying to tell them not to do things because they're going to die. No, we can eat of every tree. No, you can't. You see, when Eve disobeyed, disobeyed God, and Adam also ate of the fruit of this tree, they caused there, hear me, to be a flow in the earth realm of good and evil. Good and evil, good and evil, good and evil. Balance. The tree had both. And please note that it is disobedience that loosed evil then and now. So if you wonder, well, how come good people die and how come this and that? Because we're busy letting loose evil in the earth realm because we refuse to believe God. We refuse to obey God. And that just unleashes the evil that's already in the world. If good is gone, all that's left is evil. If good is, my God, if good is not maintained, the evil will be automatically automatically released you don't have to listen you don't have to ask for evil or you, you, you don't have to ask, come on evil come on no 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 all you have to do is disobey God and not do good and evil is right there right there you don't have to pray for mm, bring about evil mm. no, no 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 you don't have to do that you stop being good you stop disobeying God's word and evil automatically is released I want to say something to the island of Bermuda. I believe that there are churches up and down the island of Bermuda that are releasing good, that are doing good, that are obeying God's word. I also believe, I'm going to do it right, that there are some churches who are saying, no, 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 God's word is changing. God's word is being modified. Well, I'm going to tell you the devil is a liar and we've got to stand on God's word. We've got to stand on the adulterated word of God. You don't like it, but it is so. It's good for you, God. God's good is good for you. Now to our text. Recognize that in the absence of good, evil prevails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Evil shows up. The fruit of evil begins to reproduce. This is what we see happening in verses 13 and 14. Now notice I went back to verse 13 from last week. I need to do that. Let's read it. 13 and 14. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit 
of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of the Lord departed uh -oh, from Saul. Oh, here's the part. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Okay, why can we say that the evil spirit was from the Lord? Because the Lord put the tree in the Garden of Eden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil has is, is always been there. So you, if you stop eating the good fruit, then the bad fruit's going to come forth. So while the spirit of the Lord now rested on David, <laughs> this means that the backside of good or the remaining fruit of the tree was now resting upon Saul. Never underestimate what the spirit of God will do for you. The spirit of, ooh, the spirit of God upon you takes the normal you and upgrades you. I think I need to stop right there. Maybe challenge somebody sitting under the sound of my voice today. Are you truly ready for an upgrade? Are you truly ready to say, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey God's spirit. I'm not going to listen to my own spirit. I'm not going to be controlled by what's going on in my life. In spite of what's happening in my life. I, God, I want your spirit. I want the essence of who you are to rest upon me so that I am no longer me. I'm an upgrade in me. I'm a me now position to show forth the glory of God because I've yielded my life to God. The spirit, 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 spirit. I no, no more. Now hear me now. Notice this spirit with a capital S. Ain't no floozy something or the other. Something you can put down. Talking about that. I, I'm going to do everything, you know, you do the Christian, I'm going to help somebody today. You do the Christian, uh, you do the Christian thing when you're in church. You do the Christian thing when you see the pastors coming. No, 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 this spirit right here, this spirit, this Holy Spirit, when it rests upon you, you can't help yourself. You do good every day. You do good and you don't want to do good, but you submit your little spirit to the spirit because you understand you want the good of God. God, I don't want evil to come nigh my dwelling. And so I'm going to submit my spirit to your spirit. I'm talking about the spirit of God. The spirit. Let me tell you something. Nobody on their own, help somebody else, is holy enough on their own. I don't want to know what I'd be except for God's spirit. Oh my gosh. You're talking about a home, a, 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 a home grand terrorist? That would be me. You what? I'm going to be for something. But I'm so glad, Brother Kenny, that the spirit, I said the spirit. Oh, church, some of you not happy enough in here. Somebody don't understand huh? that but for God's grace, but for God's mercy, but for God's spirit, I will be a lost child. Huh? I will be a wreck. Huh? I will be the biggest sinner. But God, I'm so grateful, so grateful for your spirit, so grateful for your presence. Train me, God, teach me. Teach me. So understand this, church. This spirit is not merely air, like what we breathe. <laughs> you know, you got a lot of people breathing in, talking about jaw. They ain't talking about my God. I'm going to keep on saying it. You talk about jaw all you want. If jaw don't have a son named Jesus Christ who hung, bled, and you better come out of that jaw world, and you better stop training your children that way. You're leading them straight to hell because jaw didn't die for my sins. Jaw didn't shed his blood for my... Don't get into that. Because we're so, see, I understand, get me now, I understand the need for us to be spiritual because we come from God. But you've got to be careful now that you're willing to be disciplined by God so that you can be controlled by the right spirit. Now, and you want to do your own thing, you want to say you're bigger than anybody else, you know all you know, then you're going to be trained by your little spirit and think jaw or whoever or what. Ain't no jaw in here. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Blessed Holy Ghost. It's for God I live and for God I die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it's more than the air 
I breathe. This is the Ruach of God. I'm talking about the Ruach of God. The Spirit of God, the third person of the triune God. Come on, huh? The Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Look at these aspirations of the Spirit. An inspiring, aesthetic state of prophecy. <laughs> if you say you believe in God, you should be able to speak God's word. Now, if you believe in some other God and you're not speaking God's word, your God is wrong. As impelling prophet to utter instructional warning. See, people don't want that. You want to be padded into heaven. No, I got to warn you into heaven. I got to coach you into heaven, train you. Imparting war-like energy. Oh, oh, oh. And executive and administrative power. What? I'm telling you, I can be quiet, can be by myself or whatnot, but when the spirit gets a hold of me, I become a warrior, I become a fighter, I'm dangerous for God. No man gonna back me up, no man gonna back me down. I'm gonna stand on the word, I'm gonna stand strong, I'm gonna speak his word, I'm gonna speak it when I get up, I'm gonna speak it when I sit down, I'm gonna speak it when I exit this door, I'm gonna speak it behind this Open. Our spirit as endowing men with various gifts. Your gifts are for the body of Christ. And if you call on the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, He will enable you to use your gifts as energy of life. That's right. Now, you know, this was nice, but this is, by the way, taken from somebody. I, I like this last one. Oh, it's taken from Blue Ladder Bible. I like this last one. As manifest. Watch it now. In the Shekinah glory. Huh? Oh, some of you don't even recognize how different you are. Step inside of Shekinah every week and think you're just heading on into a normal church. I'm here to tell you right now. I'm here to let the world know this ain't no normal church. This ain't no normal church. We ain't normal. You ain't normal. You ain't normal. You ain't normal. None of you is normal because we enter into the Shekinah, the glory cloud of God, and he transforms us, and he shifts us, and he changes us, and he makes us to be what we ought to be. You ain't normal. Stop trying to be normal. Stop trying to be accepted. Be who God has called you to be. I'm under divine instructions. Come on, I say. I would do some foolish things. I ain't my own. I get him. I look at this footage. I say, what in the world? Because the glory has lifted a bit. But while I'm under the anointing, I don't know what I'm going to do next. But it's going to be under the anointing. Shabaka. Talking about the spirit. This is the very essence of God that was with soul. You got to get your picture now. Got to get your picture. Was with soul and now it's not with soul. <laughs> Some of you know, if you stay away from Shekinah for two, three weeks, y'all like got the itches. I got to get back. What did you do now? What did you do now? You're like you're having some little, um, um, what you call it? Withdrawal. <laughs> you know I got to get back in the house. God. Then you answer, you go, ooh, you just got your fix. Can I say you got a glory cloud fix? Can I say that you got a fix of the anointing, a fix of the Holy Ghost, a fix of the Spirit of God? It's not about a man. It's not about a woman. It's not about a, a human being of flesh. It's about the presence, the power, and the proficiency of the Holy Ghost. The essence of God, soul headed, and now soul does not have it. What? You know, we wonder why people can do whatever they do. I don't wonder. <laughs> I recognize that when God's spirit has departed, anything evil is possible. I'm telling you. Look at verse 15. And souls, servants, <laughs> said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. All right, all right, all right. I need to demonstrate her to go show me this. Come here, executive. Surround the past. We got we to understand 
What's going on? The wolf help. Help somebody. So before this point, he always had the presence, the spirit of God upon him. So he was protected. He was protected. Everywhere he went, he was protected until God sent in somebody, somebody to anoint. And now at that point, it's like when Saul was without the spirit, take your seat for a minute. Sit over there, Al, to try. Walk over there. He no, did not have the security system um, uh, that he had before. The protection. Come back, executive. Let me help you out. Let me give you some training on the spot. Little, little workshop here for you. Your job. I ain't even seeing who you are as individuals. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Every, come be a little space right here. I be a little gap right here. Come stand right here, Al. They, they, oh, I feel bad. There you go. Come. You, yeah, hey, hey, hey. You protect the pastor. Your job is to guard and make sure nothing untoward enters into this space right here. Trying to help somebody. Huh? Because whatever's in the spiritual world, I'm going to manifest it in the natural world. And the thing is, is that soul now loses. Go again, I told her to go. He loses his protection. Yes. Yes. Guess what? Yes. Anybody can come in and get so. Yes. Hello? Yes. I can go, hello? Yes. Yes. Hello? Yes. Anybody can attack yes. the pastor, the leader, yes. because I'm not protected yes. by the executive. And in the kingdom, the executive is the Holy Spirit. Yes. So when Saul was no longer protected by the Holy Spirit, he had to seek and call for someone who knew how to protect him. Yeah. No, don't make me, don't make me. Yeah. If I got to call yeah. Deacon Jamal, come on in, protect me. If I got to, come on, Dad, I know you're up in age, 77 years old, but I need protection. Come on, Mother Sumner, come on, let's go, let's go. Pastor needs protection. Yeah. See, you're all worried about faces. I'm worried about being attacked. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. I don't care who, I just need to be covered. Yeah. Because when the pastor's not covered, then the attacker comes in to take the pastor out because then everybody else will be taken out. Are you hearing me, people? I just thought I, that's what the Holy Ghost brought to me. You can take your seat. Thank you. Thank you. And so know that soul does not have the spirit. He recognizes that I'm missing something. And so there's going to be a search. Listen to this. In essence, the spirit of God Provided the spirit, I said, let me tell you something. It's no different today. What protects me from losing my mind, I'm going to help somebody. You can lose your mind. You can lose your footing. You can lose your place. But I'm the leader. <laughs> I can't lose my mind. I can't lose my place. And so what keeps me it's the same thing, Rhonda, the same spirit. Spirit ain't changing. It's the same yesterday, today. The spirit of God is yet with me. And look, just like with soul, provided protection for soul. This is akin to how my executive should be a protective force for me. They should wall me in. Gotcha, pastor. They should be a boundary of security, be a fence of protection from the enemy. And not because it's Maria Seaman, not because it's Dr. Maria Seaman. I'm your leader. I'm the pastor. I'm taking hits and blows and darts and bullets you don't even know of. <laughs> However, the text, the evil of this world I want you to hear it. Desires to get at the leader. <laughs> Can't wait for the jugular. And the way to get to a leader is to have God's spirit, his presence, leave. Then the leader is left open to the evil that's always been there. Well, like we're in La La Land. It's always been there. 
Before this happens, though, oh, I got my back. The servants come to the rescue. Number two, the mandated action. Go. God's got a plan. Go. 16, let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning, a cunning player on the harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. 17 and 18, and Saul said unto his servants, look, Saul be like, I don't like this feeling right here. Provide me now a man. <laughs> so I'm not the man anymore. That's what Saul was saying. He's saying the spirit has left me. Of course, yeah. Uh huh. Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I've seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty, valiant man, a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person. <laughs> comely person. Uh, means he knows stock up. <laughs> Just an ordinary God. But God will do extraordinary things with an ordinary girl. Be an ordinary man. Be an ordinary woman. Be an ordinary worshiper. Be an ordinary person who loves God and watch God use you. Hallelujah. And the Lord, that's, that's what matters. And the Lord is with him. So the servants know. So watch out, not God has got it. <laughs> Come on now. So, so, what being around you enough to know you're missing a little something? We're going to hook you up. Hold on. Hold on. Let's talk about this word cunning because they said it's a cunning player. Matter of fact, I, 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 try, I got so busy working on Friday. I exhibited, I viewed a skilled, cunning violinist on Thursday night. I would have tried. I was so busy. I wanted to call you, see if I could get that young man here for this sermon. I mean, this young man played. He did his exam and got an A+. Plus. He played. He, I'm, you were all at prize giving. <laughs> Miss Rollins, I'm sitting there going, look at God. That's just like David. I'm going in this sermon because this is Thursday. So I'm already traveled through most of my sermon. I'm going, look at this. I need him. I need him. Just got so busy. But I'm going to tell you, this young man, the anointing's on that fella. The anointing's on him. I said, that's what you mean? I mean, his fingers were all going. I was like, look at this. I said, I can see him now with the harp. So he, you're looking at a violin. Seaman was looking at a harp because of the sermon. He's cunning. Cunning from, comes from the word yada, meaning to know. Definitions here, to perceive and see, find out and discern. Oh, this and David, playing an instrument. But oh, this is going on right here. To discriminate. Oh, we don't believe... We don't believe in discrimination. You better believe in discrimination. Let everybody walk up in your house. Like, er, let everybody, you know, you, we always discriminate. We, we, we discriminate morning, noon, and night. And I think so. No, no. That food don't look good. I'm discriminating against you. <laughs> I smell food. Don't smell good. I'm discriminating against you. I discriminate all day. <laughs> you know, anyway. Just by playing, I mean, by playing, see, I've got the violin. Just by playing to discriminate, distinguish, you better tell something from something, to know by experience, to recognize, admit, acknowledge, confess, to consider. All this going on while he's playing the harp. So this is more, I like that, this is more than playing. It is playing an instrument with understanding. You did it this morning, director. You understood when the service changed and you began to play, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Oh, I said, Lord, have mercy. He's kicked into the spirit realm. He knows now that he's got to hit the road. Come on, church. He's got, why well, you think seven-day churches now have musicians that play usually on a Sunday playing? Because they know that there's something anointed in the music. There's something about the music. That's why they need to buy are our musicians because there's something about playing at a key. There's something about tapping in into the spirit realm, into the shift that's taking place. Come on up in here. Huh? I tell you, at least once a month, I think I want to learn how to play the piano. I'm sure I'm meant to be brilliant playing something. I ran away to Florida. I walked into that music place. I saw all oh, these guitars. I said, I know I could play that one. I could play that one. I could do this. I just don't have enough time in the day because I want to be known as skills, you know, you know, real skillful. All right, I digress, but this is what it means. 
I want to be a cunning player. And so this is more than just playing. It's playing with an understanding. Huh? David would be with Saul, and when the evil spirit came upon Saul, David has the knowledge of when to play, what to play, how to play. In other words, David entered, oh Jesus, into spiritual warfare. Oh, David entered into spiritual warfare. That when that demonic spirit of evil came upon Saul, he said, Oh yeah, God help me now. Which key, which key, which note, which note to hit, God? I need to calm the man down. I need to bring him in. Huh? Why why you think rock music is dangerous? Why you think rap music is dangerous? Why you because they got keys and notes that hit a different part of your spirit. And that's why we've got to be careful what we play in the house of God. Even when we do um ole, ole. I'm careful, you know. I say, God, cover this song with the blood because I don't need no untoward soaker evil coming into the I'm telling you, it matters what you play, it matters how you play it. You gotta discern. I'm on no shake it up. Huh? That. So David, he he entered into spiritual warfare when Saul was taken over by the evil spirit. They are going to fetch the anointed son of Jesse. He's a son now. Remember last week he wasn't a son. Then he finally got to be a children. But when the king comes, oh yes, my son. You know I got a little attitude right there. I didn't put any sermon, but you know you need my son. The king needs my son, right? Now, they're going to fetch the anointed son of Jesse. Watch this. David, <laughs> David already knew how to sense danger. <laughs> David already knew when he had a fight. Huh? David had a rod and a stab. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. You think he had him for his good looks? You think he had him because he just was skillful? No, 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 no. Gonna be some fighting. So you can't be a leader if you don't know how to fight. And I'm not fighting the way you want me to fight. I'm not gonna fight here, me. I'm not gonna fight the way you want me to fight. I'm gonna fight in the spirit realm. I'm gonna bring whatever's going on under subjection to the spirit of the living God. Why? Because like David, I've been trained since my youth. I've taken some things since my youth. I know how to act. I know how to behave. I'm cunning. I'm not cunning on an instrument, but I'm cunning in my behavior. The rod and the staff. Mm -hmm. Not the oldest son, not the wanted son, but I'm the trained son. I'm the one for the job. Huh? I've been called huh? before the foundation of the world. Huh? I may not have been wanted by you, huh? may not have been wanted by you, huh? but the Lord God himself huh? placed upon me huh? the ability to handle certain situations. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, let me tell you something. <laughs> in protecting his sheep, give me some preaching music <laughs> just for a minute here. <laughs> in protecting some sheep, <laughs> he had already killed, <laughs> killed a lion, <laughs> killed a bear. <laughs> David had learned how to sense danger so that no sheep would be lost. You don't mind that your pastor is a fighter. You don't mind that I learned to fight. I don't want you lost. I don't want you going astray. I don't want you going over the cliff. I don't want you feeding in strange pastures. I gotta protect you. I gotta teach you. I gotta train you. Why? Because God did it. He trained me on the backside of the wilderness. Broader correction. Staff of direction. If you're gonna go where God would have you to go, you gotta have a shepherd who knows how to show you the way. So look at this 19, hallelujah, 19 and 20. 19 and 20. <laughs> wherefore Saul, wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. He ain't with Saul's army. Is with the sheep. <laughs> and Jesse took an ass laden with bread, a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. Well, Jesse follows protocol and does not send David empty handed. Huh? The presence, right? The presence, I think they're here. There they are. 
they were to pay homage to the king out of respect. You know, most times people come to the pastor and just bring burdens and troubles. I'm waiting for somebody to bring some tiramisu. I'm just talking like I'm talking. You know, stop down, get some fresh, fresh French fries. Here you go, pastor. With some seasoning salt on them. Not a whole bag, half a bag from Art Mouse. Really good, really good. Yeah, those are, our, our mouths, french fries are anointed. That's all. They're anointed. You know, so while you're coming to give me your burgers, just say, here you go, pass a nice tiramisu. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to say, speak on, child. Speak on. Speak on. <laughs> Jesse <laughs> was showing respect to the king. Yet I must stop here and say that David was not empty-handed ever at all. King Saul had no need of the bread, wine, or kid. This, this stuff here came from David's father. The, what, what the king needed, the father didn't have. <laughs> he, Saul needed the anointing. Oh, come on up in here. He was anointed originally, you know, Saul was originally anointed by Samuel. So Saul knew that, hey, I'm even, I'm doing a good job. Yeah, because that's when you were under the anointing. And so now that the anointing, verse 13, has departed, but now he's like, oh, Lord, we're, 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 I need that. I need that anointing again. I need it. David had what he no longer had. Lord, have mercy. See, let me tell you something, church. Little, here, catch, catch this, catch. When you see that you've lost an anointing, you don't ever have to go to a person to find it. Just go back before God because he's not going to take the gift away from you. Get yourself together. Get yourself back. Come on up in here. And nobody can take your gift. Nobody can take your anointing. Around here looking at people crooked eye. Do what you got to do. Get in your place. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Operate in your calling. Do what God has called you to do. I need your gift. So this takes us to point three. The melodic answer. Give. Give. Anytime you have an answer in the kingdom, it's to give, you know. It's never to keep to yourself. <laughs> it's like you cannot be selfish in the kingdom. Whatever God gives you, you are not operating in your purpose unless you're giving it. 21, 22. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Sure, he wants the anointed real close. Like, don't leave me. If you leave me, I'm going to act up. <laughs> and Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. Now, that's a nice thing. That's really nice for Saul to say. But can I say this? David had already found favor in God's sight. Huh? David has gone from favor in the sheepfold to favor in the palace. <laughs> work, work your pasture. Work your sheepfold. Work wherever God has you working. And God will pour out his favor right there. So then you can bring it into the house. And we got favor, 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 all in God's house. And guess what? We all can be God's favorite. Now, I'm going to be personal. I'm so glad I'm his favorite. I'm so glad I'm his favorite. Are you glad that you're his favorite? How are you glad that you're his favorite? Don't you know that you got his favor? That what God has for you is for you. No man can take it from you. No man can deny it. No, it's yours because it's from God. You're God's favorite. So, yeah. And you know, that, that type of thing, you know, I remember, you know, Allie. Remember I had Gloria McPhee as my teacher when I was... Eight, nine. Remember that? Karen, I'm sorry, Karen. Yeah, her, her daughter. Gloria was the MP. I mean, Miss, Mrs. Miss MP Gloria McPhee. Because I'm just thinking back by the spirit. And I'm just going to tell you this little story. Take a minute and a minute here. And, um, you know, I was in a class. It was this girl named Nicole in my class. Now, Nicole was fairer than me. I was brown, more brown. So, <laughs> so when Miss Karen McPhee, because they had a pool too, we went down the house and went swimming in the pool. You remember the pool? And so 
when Karen McPhee came to teach at Elliott, my mom had already told me, I don't know if she remembers, she says, because um, you knew her before she started teaching. So you said, oh, you're going to have a teacher. Her name's, name, her name's Karen McPhee. So I was like, OK, my mama's got the inside scoop. And um, like the setup. So I knew, because remember, I'm very shy, right? I was automatically going to be called out, like be the teacher's pet and all that, because I had the inside scoop. However, my mama, she was more high yellow looking back then than she is today. And so Nicole, the student in my class with me, she was high yellow like my mama. So I just was in the class watching things. And I'm like, because I wouldn't say you're only eight. I'm like, I think the teacher thinks that's, 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 that's my mama's child. Because she seems to be giving her a little bit more favor. Probably because I'm a little darker than her. I'm telling you the things that come across a child's mind. So, oh, why am I saying this? Hold on. Favor, right. And so my thing was, um, when your mama knows the teacher, it should be a little bit of favor happening around in this classroom. So I was getting a little attitude at eight. I don't see no favor. Where's the benefit of my mama knowing this person where she seems like she's treating Nicole better than me? Right? I don't know how I got over it, but I do remember that part of the story. I think it was my brilliance that actually end, end up outshining. And so that's, I think that's how it went. But what you getting, Elder? Handle it. Protect me. <laughs> you see how vulnerable I am since my youth? This favor, we are always looking for favor. I understand it, anybody? You want your bo boss to give you a nice, what do you call? Well, a raise too, but what's the thing they write out? Evaluation, which will lead to the burners. You want favor? You know, because one thing I can't handle is fake people. Oh, no, I need no favor. Oh, no, that's false humility. I want favor! Favor from the north, east, south. I want favor. I'm trying to tell somebody. I've always wanted favor. Obviously. So this word favor, let's go back into the word. Comes from the word ken. Meaning grace, charm, precious, acceptance. That's what was upon David. Saul recognizes that he no longer has favor. And so now he wants to be next to or have the person. I want you as my armor bearer because you're favored. Because if, you, if look, they ain't going to get you and you're protecting me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want big body guards. Yeah. I believe that Saul recognized that what he used to have, David had it now. He accepted David, not for David's sake. This is amazing. But for the presence of the anointing that was upon his life. The anointing makes the difference. It's not in merely David, it's the anointing. Because what we now have is that David, <laughs> David is with the king. Come here, Jamal, you be the king for a minute here. I won. I did it right. David's with the king, the king. But the king ain't anointed. I got this raggedy old crown, don't look at sharp, but guess what? The anointing's here. See, you can have the crown, but it doesn't mean you got the anointing. <laughs> you want the anointing so that the crown calls on you. The crown, you can be king all you want, but if you're the king without the anointing, it's the anointing that makes the difference. So he calls the difference. Difference means what? Let's go back to school. Difference means subtraction. What's the difference between these two numbers? So you subtract, right? And so what has been subtracted from his life, he now wants to add. So he makes David his armor bearer. In other words, the armor I have is no longer strong enough. 
will no longer protect me. I won't have the fight that I should have. So I now need what I'm missing. And so he calls on David so that now David really has the anointing of a present king and a future king. So really the king is crownless because God has anointed a new leader. My Lord. Go for the anointing. Go for the favor. The king has David there for one reason, and that is God has David there for his destiny. His destiny. You're going to serve, but it's for your destiny. I mean, come, come back here a minute. <laughs> oh, pretty good. That's the king. I already know how to fight in the pastures. Watch it now. We're going to get this good. I already know how to fight in the pastures. Now I need to know how to fight in the palace. Mm -hmm. Different type of fight. Look, let, let, let me help people out because people think I'm in la-la land sometimes. You can fight out there all you want. It's a different type of battle when you enter into the church. Oh, take the crown off. It's a different type of battle. You know, people walk into the church and think that it should be angels and they should just always just feel the wind, the brush of the angels. No, you're going to have spiritual warfare in. That's, that, that makes sense. So I remember it's done. Last verse here. And it came to pass that when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul. Come here, Saul. Daddy, you be Saul. Okay, you be Saul this time. Look, I'm changing. I'm like a producer. I'm changing these. Look, Saul. Right? Evil spirit came upon Saul. Come here, Deacon Jamal. You're not David. You won't be David. You're David. <laughs> when the evil spirit came upon Saul, Saul then looked to David to then really anoint his presence with what he was missing. So I got a question for you. I got a question. Who has God anointed you to calm down? Oh, Lord. Oh, I like, I, I like that myself. Who has God told you when they act up, I expect better of you. When these go wrong, I expect you to be right. Huh? When they lose out, look at this now. This is the part we can't handle. This is the part, this is going to take it to another level right here. Watch this. When Saul acts up, when he acts like, he, no, he, yeah, he lost his mind. I want you to save him by serving him. Did you get? I wish I had all 20, 39, 20, 1500 towels. I'll throw every towel. Serve, serve, serve. The anointing makes you serve even a person that's lost their mind. Just serve them, serve them, serve them. Because the serving is not for a soul, it's for you. You serve. You're anointed to serve. You do what God has called you to do. Thank you, man of God. Oh, we gotta get it. See. What's happened is, church leaders, we've become so sharp, right? We've become so sharp, we just think everybody's got to serve us. You got to serve me. I'll carry my own equipment. I'll log on me and I'll do whatever I've got to do. No, no, no. You serve the kingdom. Yes. Serve the kingdom. Yes. Oh, God, I hope somebody's getting it. I'm almost done now. Whenever the present king Saul was bothered, the future king... King David served him with skill and with the anointing of musicianship. Whatever King Saul was experiencing trouble, he knew what key to hit. He, what, he knew what note to play. And Saul would just go, wow, I feel bad enough. I feel bad enough. I feel okay. Huh? Listen, listen, listen. Listen, when musicians are anointed, they can shift the atmosphere. Why do you think the devil wants the Christian musicians in the club? So that 
he could shift that atmosphere, but not for the glory of the kingdom. He wants to abuse the anointing of God. I'll tell you about pay attention. Anointed. Yes, sir. Hamonase. Sheba Kanda Yororosa. Anointed musicians are tools of God mandated to create an atmosphere of worship unto God. Mm -hmm. This is why the devil wants godly musicians so that they can be manipulated to build his kingdom. David understood his own gift and David allowed God to use his gift from God to be a refreshment. Saul was, let me tell you something, I'm gonna, I can feel it already. I can feel it already. I'm going to go home. I'm going to be so relaxed because I felt the anointing today. I felt the anointing in praise and worship, sir. I tell you, you did your, you did your servant ministry. That's what you did. You did your servant ministry. Felt the anointing as singing was going on. Heard the different keys. I said, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. Uh, I heard the man of God as they played skillfully on the intro. I said, I'm going to feel good. I'm going to feel good. You, if you had a camera on me while I'm editing this afternoon, all you would do is see me grinning. Once in a blue, my husband steps in and he, he just sees I'm Zoom rating. I didn't even see him, hear him open up the door. Why? Because now the anointing of praise, the anointing of worship has so engulfed me. It's the anointing that makes a difference. Hold on, how much Glory to God. Yeah, that means it's something else. David understood his own gift. Let's look at this word refreshed. This is what ought to happen in church. Refreshed comes from the word revok. To breathe easily. Be relieved. Oh, I'm relieved when I get church and I see things all right. Got my praise and worship leader. Got the musicians praise team. All right, we're setting the atmosphere for God's presence. Oh, that's such a relief. Church, when you have the ruach of God, the spirit, big ass now, you are able to refresh others. Run into people every week. You don't know me, but I know you. And this week in particular, because I was feeling a certain way in my spirit, little ass, I was so happy. Linda is this blessed place. I, I, I went there. And people I'd never known said, you keep up that work, Dr. Seaman. We feel your prayers and worship. What? You all don't even know what you're doing to countless people in the island of Bermuda. Their spirit. Don't take it for granted. Don't think it's nothing. Director, allow God to set you up. Don't look for the favor of mankind. No, you want favor from God so that God will use you to bless somebody else <laughs> with his presence. Every negative situation is an opportunity to be set up for the glory of God. I'm not taking anything as negative. It, well, even if it is negative, that's just a temporary negative moment that's going to lead to a positive outcome. That's the way I, I don't care. That's right. Because God is working it out. And that's the mindset that we have to have in the kingdom. If not, this world will crush us and consume us. We've got to be cultivated by the word of God. Captured by the word of God. For the glory of God. David was called to Saul. Because David had what Saul would need. And Saul had the atmosphere of the palace. David would need that to learn it. Took him from one place to another for his glory. This week as you travel Bermuda, you're going to be more aware as you interact with people, this is a setup. Or is this a setup? <laughs> and take everything as a setup. And operate with the faith. Just keep on doing what you do. Let the church say amen. Come on. Yeah. Let the church, Let the church say amen. Oh, yes. God has spoken. So let the church, Let the church say amen.